the fuck? What? Hey guys, what's up? It's Guango. I feel like I have not talked to you guys in a very long time. I feel like the week did not come fast enough. Is that, was that, did you guys feel like that? I felt like that. I felt like that. Oh my god, this episode! Like, what? I, are you guys panicking? Because I'm panicking. I was in an emotional crisis, and I haven't felt this since, like, season three, most likely. Like, I was literally in Starbucks watching this episode, and I started, like, like, I was on the verge of tears. I was going to cry, but we're in public, so I couldn't cry. Okay, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. So Crystal Reed is back. She's playing one of her old ancestors uh, in, that runs in the Argent family. Her name is Mary Jean. <sighs> this episode was so good. Uh, the accents bother me. Like, I get their French and all, but, like, I think it's because I'm not used to Crystal Reed using an accent, so it, like, bothered me. But, like, other than that, it was like, ah, uh, it was so good. It was so good. Gerard talks to Lydia and um, Parrish, and Gerard technically tells uh, Lydia about the history of the Beast. And uh, because Parrish felt like, you know, he wasn't pretty much in control of his power, and he didn't feel that he was needed anymore because he felt like he lost himself and he didn't really know what to do. And, but then Gerard's like, Lydia, you have the power to defeat the Beast. Uh, but I think Lydia took it in the way as in, after the story was told, I think Lydia took it in the way as in like, I'm not Allison and I'm not an Argent. But I don't think Lydia understands the full extent of her power. I think she knows that her power is there, but I think she keeps on doubting herself that her power is so strong. Like, she, like, she can kill people if she wanted to. Like, you know what I'm Played by Crystal Reed is one of the most skilled hunters and uh france in this little town that she lived and pretty much her brother sebastian was in war and he didn't think that they were going to defeat the british and he wrote this letter to her saying that you know i don't know if i'm gonna live or die or not and uh everybody was hearing the stories and rumors about the beast during the war and you know it wasn't actually the war itself but it was pretty much the beast interfering she obviously did not know the full extent of the supernatural yet because she was doubtful um, until she met, um, you know, her brother's friend, like her friend too. I forgot his name. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so bad with names. I forgot his name already, but he's been, you know, studying about the supernatural, like the mountain ash, mistletoe. He knew everything. He pretty much helped Mary Jean defeat uh, the beast when she figures out that her brother was the beast. Um, and I was, when I was, like, listening to this, I was like, plot twist, plot twist. Like, can you believe it, guys? Like, what even? I think Allison was very representative in this episode. Um, not because of, like, her family past, but, like, Mary Jean in, like, in general is pretty much, like, a historic version of Allison. And I really love that because, you know, we're still like hung up on Allison dying and everything. And I am especially because Allison was like my favorite. Um, but I think it was amazing to see, you know, kind of like a different version of Allison, but an Allison that we grew up to love, you know, she's strong and she would pretty much do anything um, when it came to to like a really hard decision and she killed her brother and and I don't think it was any more I don't think it was about family anymore or love it was more about you know facing her fears and defeating uh defeating a person that was killing millions of people and she knew that it was morally wrong and she knew that she had to stop him, and I really love this because it's it's amazing, you know? It's a really hard decision to make, especially if you're going to kill someone that is pretty much your family. But the plot twist, guys, the plot twist. <sighs> plot twist. Mason? Mason as the beast? And I think Corey knew when he backed off when he kissed Mason, 
uh, because he's like, oh my god, are you the beast? One thing that is really, like, I'm hung up on this is that, like, okay, it's either Mason is the beast, or I think, um, I think, okay, so I think, like, Mason is the beast, because, you know, like, they were saying how they don't, the beast doesn't know who, like, who they, like, who they are, and stuff, um, but at the same time, we all know Teen Wolf, and we all know Jeff Davis. It's always like they point us to a direction of the possible beast, but really it ends up being someone else that makes you like want to pull out your hair. Mason. I like Mason, guys. But I am excited like what the next episodes are going to hold, and... I wonder if Liam is going to make the same decision as Mary Jean did about Mason because this is your best friend you're talking about. In addition to that, Parrish needs to come back. Like, don't leave Parrish. If you guys are still shocked about, like, Mason, give it a thumbs up. And also, check out uh, my other videos that will be coming soon. And check out my vlog channel. I got some, like, fitness vlogs up in there you know me doing some fitness jk i struggle with sit-ups i struggle um but thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you guys next week do i also need a shock blanket next week most likely bye Woo. but i try hard to uncover them